let me clean ya. Get them nice and clean, ready for the beauty pageant. Whoa! Look at these guys. Look at those cute little tails. Ooh. These guys have the second largest venom yield of any venomous snake in the world. Crocodiles, look at this big, beautiful skull of a Nile crocodile from Africa. Nile crocodiles are some of the biggest crocodiles on the planet, getting upwards to 20 feet long. One of the biggest crocodiles ever caught alive was about 21, 22 feet low long, the saltwater crocodile from the Philippines. Now, crocodiles can have upwards to 5,000 pounds per scrunch pressure in their jaws. And the way they can produce that pressure is they have these big muscles on the back of their skull called jowls that help slam down those jaws using these massive teeth to pierce into their prey, crush bone, skull, basically anything that fits in those jaws. And these guys are gonna be ripping down some of the biggest game in Africa, like buffalo, hyenas, lions sometimes if they're unlucky. Now crocodiles are tough predators. Check out all these little dimples on top of the skull. If you were to see the skin on the croc, you'd see there's little dots everywhere. And those little dots are basically pressure receptors. They're called ISOs. So if a crocodile's on the surface of the water or underneath the water, it can detect any motion around its face. Those dots are on every scale of the crocodile's body, whereas an alligator only has them on the face. So crocodiles and alligators have a built-in sonar to detect their prey. So if you get too close while swimming, they'll snap you right in their jaws. Now the crocodile's teeth are able to reproduce throughout its lifetime. So if it breaks a tooth off when slamming down that pressure on bone, these guys can reproduce thousands of teeth in a lifetime. If a tooth breaks off, there's another one right under it, ready to replace it like a cone dispenser. So breaks, new one, breaks, new one, and they can always hunt down their prey. Maybe later in life when they get a little bit older and they're not eating as much nutrition, they're not able to reproduce as much teeth. But the better the diet, the better tooth production. And Aries used to have some funky looking teeth. And after eating a good diet of whole body prams like pigs, chickens, and rats, he's got a full set. Let's go see that full set up close in the crock pit. And Miss Toothy, the Cuban crocodile, you can see right here, she's got these crazy curved teeth. So unlike the Nile crocodile, the Cuban crocodile's teeth actually curve back so they can hold on to their prey item. And Miss Toothy is a very, very dangerous crocodile. She is a beast of a Cuban crocodile, and she's a female. A male can actually get upwards of 10 plus feet long. Ready? Miss Toothy. Miss Toothy. Want some food, Miss Toothy? Go easy. Go easy. Woo! Beautiful Cuban crocodile. And Aries already has a chicken. We had to distract him just a little bit before we started feeding so he didn't truck me out the fence. Beautiful Cuban crocodile. Look at her teeth. And she eats with tenacity. Look at that. Woo! Better get her a new chicken. Aries. Easy, big boy. Woo! Beautiful now, crocodile. Uh-oh. Easy, easy. Woo! Beautiful Cuban crop. Woo! Such a gorgeous crocodile. They got this yellow speckling all over their skin and they'll actually change color depending on how hot it is outside. So if it's overcast, they have a black back so they can absorb more heat because black conducts more heat than yellow. And then when they're full of heat, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Look at the food. Come on, big boy. Come on, big boy. Woo! You want some food, Miss Toothy? Woo! Come on, Miss Toothy. Easy, easy. Woo -hoo -hoo. Did you hear that pressure? She has the capability to have that 5,000 pounds per scrunch pressure as well. Even though she's not as big as Aries, she still has those muscles to crunch down with that pressure. I'm running out of chicken. Easy. Good girl. Beautiful Cuban crocodile. Love ya. Nadia. Uh-oh, beautiful Siamese crocodile. Go easy, Nadia. Go easy, Nadia. Look, look, look. Look at the food. Look at the, oh, you little crazy. Come on. Nadia. It's always good to have a bucket on hand, just in case they go past the bucket. Whoa, good girl. 
Nadia is a critically endangered Siamese crocodile. Used to be found throughout Asia, but they're whoo, but they're critically endangered. <laughs> whoo, Nadia. Easy, Nadia. Want some food? Want to go for a jump? Look at the food. Look at the food. Look at the food. Come on. Come on. Look, look at the food, you crazy crocodile. Uh oh, she's so quick in this water. Nadia, look, food. Whoa, whoa. Easy, go for the food. Go for the food, baby, not the bucket. Hey, come on. Good girl. You're a crazy little crocodile. Love her though. We gotta get her a boyfriend in the future so we can create an insurance colony to keep these guys going as long as possible in captivity. They're like the dragon of Asia or a mini saltwater crocodile. I love them, beautiful eyes. Here we have my American crocodile, Ziggy. Woo, hey Ziggy, what's going on baby? Don't come out now. Don't come out now, be easy, be easy. Oh, you missed it. There you go, baby. Beautiful American crocodile, once almost completely extinct here in the state of Florida. And now the species is coming back uh, in the thousands because of proper protection so nobody can hunt them or poach them or anything. Baby, you, you stay in there. What are you doing? Come on, come on, easy. There you go, baby. So basically, these guys were in a couple hundred down in South Florida and with proper protection and protecting their nesting grounds. Now they're coming back in huge numbers. And these crocodiles are actually found throughout the Americas and the Caribbean. So you can find them in Central America, South America, Jamaica, as well as Florida. Whoa! Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Woo! Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Come on. Whoa! She's a fast little crocodile, and she's beautiful. So right now I have about 12 American crocodiles. I recently gave uh, my buddy Stone one as a gift so he can use it as an educational ambassador. And uh, I have three of my main American crocodiles, Bobby, Bobby, Layla, and Ziggy. And then I have nine left of the, the younger group of American crocs. And we're probably gonna get more babies next year. So I think I'm gonna rehome a lot of those babies and actually get more species and trade them out. There you go, baby. Because uh, we're not trying to keep every species of crocodilian here at the facility, but it would be cool to keep a majority of the threatened species and breed them to create the assurance colonies. And also have some really cool educational ambassadors. So maybe maybe like a false gharial, maybe some big saltwater crocs. Even though we got Anakin, we might want to get some ones that are already kind of big. Come on, because nothing's cooler than a saltwater crocodile. This is basically the salty of the Americas. They're just not as notorious for eating people unless you're down South America where people tend to cross the rivers a little bit drunk and they get snatched up by American crocs that are hungry. So even though these guys are not known to attack people here in America, in North America and Florida, uh, they can kill people and eat them. So you always have to be wary. Just like an American alligator, just because they don't tend to eat people doesn't mean they won't attack somebody and kill them if you're doing the wrong thing. Swimming with them at night, feeding them, making them cheeky and coming up to you for food, or uh, just trying to handle them when you don't know what you're doing and uh, maybe you had too many beers and you're trying to jump on one in the swamp. Always leave these guys alone. Leave it to the professionals to handle these animals and remove them when they're becoming nuisances. Ziggy, big girl. Love this American crop. Let's go see Joby, the American alligator. I gotta pressure clean his back and feed him some chicken. Let's go. Let's feed Joby, the big bull gator. Joby, what are you doing, big boy? What are you doing, big boy? Come on, Joby. Come on, big boy. Easy, easy, easy. Easy, easy, easy. Come on, big boy. Woo! Big bull alligator. No, that's the bucket. Oh, big boy. <laughs> oh. Jeez, look at that. He's such a beast. This is an alligator that Stone, my good brother from Native Village, caught with his brother. He's probably about 11 foot long now, and he's about to go into a 13 foot deep pond before the year's over. So. He'll be done with this temporary enclosure. He loves to eat roosters, pig, rats. He's a big bull, right? You're a big bull gator. Look how he just chucks that big old rooster down like it's nothing, right down past the palatal valve, which is a valve that stays sealed in the back of the throat to keep water from rushing in when they're underwater grabbing prey. And when they're ready to swallow, they must come to the surface or they'll drown when capturing prey. So let me give him a couple more chickens and we're gonna clean them up nice and good. Come on, big boy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There we go. Big boy. Really big alligator. 
Woo. He's gonna go in that water, swallow up. Let me get the hose ready. Yeah, there we go. Look at that beautiful bull gator. Right under all that algae, we got a gorgeous big black and white alligator. Just like that, cuts right through the algae. Damn it. Damn it, kinks. Damn it. Yeah. Come on. Come on. There we go. And that tail. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a genuine alligator tail right there. You gotta get nice and clean. Get every little osteoderm nook and cranny nice and clean. There we go. That's a genuine alligator right there. I can't thank my buddy Stone enough for this big beautiful gator. Woo! Get that side. Cut through all that algae right there. I got this hose nozzle at the Big John's Feed Store. Thank you very much, Big John's Feed Store. Helps clean my alligator right up. Come here, let me clean ya. Come here, let me clean ya. That's a genuine alligator Mississippi. -ish. That's a beautiful alligator right there. Get them nice and clean, ready for the beauty pageant. There we go. How to get in there with a scrub brush and scrub them. What are you gonna get out? There we go. Oh. He's got this crazy notch on his tail right here that uh, he's had since we caught him. We don't know what it's from. Maybe it was from getting stuck in a culvert pipe or a fight with another gator. But look at him. He's a big alligator. Look at this big boy. Look at this big boy. Oh, I'm going to wrestle him. I'm going to wrestle this big gator. Ah. He's saying, let me finish my trick and leg. While Mosul, those are the ears of the alligator. See, you learn a little bit of something here on Channel's Wildlife. You see the right there, the ears of the alligator called squab mosels. The, the bundle of osteoderms on the neck are called a nuclear cluster. And then uh, we got the osteoderms on the back. And then you got the, the scutes on the tail, cotton scutes. And then right there, the big jowls right there, the big meaty jowls are the crushing pressure of the crocodilian skull like I was talking about earlier. Look at that rooster. He looks like he's taking a little nap inside that gator's mouth right there. Woo! Don't forget to get your Chandler's Wildlife merch. We got the It's Just Superficial Crocodile Bite to the Leg shirt. Come on, get your merch if you're a Florida man, if you're an Indonesian man, if you're an Australian man. You know what kind of merch you need. You need a merch like this. This right here. Jubilee, Jubilee, little babies. How you doing? My sweet camel boys. Woo! We got all these little American crocodiles. We got a few of the bunch out here in the garage. And they're getting big. Look at these guys. When I got them, they were tiny little hatchlings the size of geckos, about six, seven inches long. And now they're going on a foot long. Look at them. Woo! Cute little foot long American crocodiles. And we'll see how many of these guys end up staying at this facility. We're just going to keep growing them out and taking care of them. We love American crocodiles here at CWW. My favorite croc next to the saltwater crocs. These guys can get about 18 to 19 feet long. Look at those cute little tails. Ooh, ready for a swim? Here you guys go. Right back where you belong. These guys will go back outside once the temperatures aren't fluctuating so much with the cold snaps. Let's go see one more animal. Let's go see how Kevin the King Cobra is doing. Woo! And we got Kevin the King Cobra, my beautiful Malaysian King Cobra. He's doing good. I thought I'd take him out, show you guys how sexy he's looking. He's a little dark right now because he's growing like crazy. Look how big Kevin is getting. He is a massive King Cobra. Gorgeous 14, 15 foot long Malaysian King Cobra. And you can see he's not getting too crazy with me. It's not like Justina where he's flying at me, trying to bite me all the time. Uh, he's pretty laid back. Doesn't mean he won't try to bite me. He's still a dangerous animal. And if I make a mistake, he will bite me and potentially kill me. But look at him, beautiful Malaysian King Cobra. I'm just gentle with him. I let him blow throughout my hands. I don't restrain him unless I need to medicate him for some reason. And you can see he's got these massive bulging venom glands right here on the back of the head. These guys have the second largest venom yield of any venomous snake in the world, next to the Gaboon Viper. So the Gaboon Viper has the most venom in one bite, whereas the King Cobra is second in line. And they say a one bite from a King Cobra can actually kill a bull elephant. He's a sexy boy. All right, beautiful people, I think that's going to be it for this episode. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, love your animals. Be nice to everyone around you, and I'll see you on the next one. You. Need, you need a merch like this. This right here.